my name is Gaurav Garg and I'm a staff engineer in the SpanFS team at Kuwait City. And today I'm going to talk about our object store capabilities and specifically I'm going to focus on its multi-protocol access uh, capabilities. And I'm also going to talk about what the problem and the pain points it solves for the cover customers. So with that, uh, I'll just give you a brief overview of our object store, what we have built. So we supported all the table stake features for object store. We support AWS S3 compatible APIs. You can create unlimited buckets. You can store billions of objects. And objects could range from few kilobytes to terabytes, so there's no limit on that. We support bucket level and object level ACLs, right? And we support object versioning, multi-part upload. There's other like, few table stake features I'm listing out, but there are other many features. I will not go into details. So with that, I want to talk about our key differentiators. One of the key differentiators is we support global dedupe, compression, erasure encoding, and the encryption for our object store also. So uh, imagine you can use Coicity for backup purposes as well as home directory purposes. What we do is we do not just dedupe the data for the objects. We all dedupe across globally dedupe the data. So you know backup data, your file share data, and objects data will be globally deduped. So we get global efficiency with our ob with the Coicity appliance. The next point is we provide multi-protocol access for our data. As Mohit talked about that, you can dump data via NFS and SMB. Now you can access the same data via S3 for maybe you want to do some analytics, you can expose it to your Spark job, right? And I will we'll go into details about multi-protocol access in the next few slides. Another thing we want to talk about is our instant bucket cloning feature. What with that you can do is that you have a bucket and you, you, know, you can instantaneously clone and create multiple copies of your bucket for test and depth purposes. So we'll go into details about it in the next few slides. So in this slide, I'm going to talk about why we built an object store and what problem it solves. So with Coicity, we want to converge all your secondary storage need into a single platform. You can run Coicity to run your backups. You can run Coicity to run your filer use cases, test and depth, analytics, and also an object store. What you could do is that you can dump data via NFS. Maybe you're running backups. You're archiving some data to Coicity. Now you can expose the same data set for your for your analytics purpose to a Spark job via S3. Now you can sign data to your dark data, right? And uh, I'm talk about one of the use cases and one of the customers who using our platform is that they run backups during night time. Maybe the backup runs from 6 p.m. to you know or 9 a.m. in the morning. I'm thinking, hey. Our cluster is idle during the daytime, and they are also a SaaS and a CRM software company, and they had a need to they store a lot of PDF files and images, and currently they were using a database to store those PDF files. What they did was, they, hey, they migrated their, ob their PDF file and images to Coicity object store. Now what they do is now during the daytime, they serve their objects. They use the Coicity object store to serve PDF files, and night time they run backups on the Coicity. And also, as Moet mentioned, again, they use the QS policies and the QS setting we have to isolate these two, work, isolate these two workloads so that the backup gets a lower priority. And if you're running test and dev or you're running object store, they get the higher priority and they get higher QS. Right. So with that, I'm going to do a few demos. So the first demo we are going to do is to talk about our Simplicity and setting up of buckets for multi-protocol access. And since we support both NFS, SMB, and S3, so I want to talk about uh, our construct we use. So internally, we use a construct called view. And when we use view in terms of S3, we consider it as a bucket. But when you talk in terms of a NFS or SMB, we call it as a volume or a you know, mount point. So I'm going to use the term views and bucket interchangeably. So so in this demo, I'm going to show you is that how easy it is from our QCD UI to create a bucket for multi-protocol access. So how do you handle like somebody updating a file or something like that? So what we allow you to do is that you can create a bucket which is NFS read write and SMB read write. At the same time, it will be S3 read only. But if you want to make that data available for S3 write only, you can do a clone of that bucket using our instant clone facility. Now with that, once you cloned it, now you can do a writable copy of your bucket. So we don't allow you to write via NFS and S3 in parallel, because those two protocols are a bit different. NFS is like file 
<coughs> Pilar kind of protocol and we have the series like key value store. So they don't gel very well together. So we don't allow concurrent write via both the protocols. I have a question on the, uh, yeah. on the SDA. So, so setup question, Does, if you have a cluster in site A, you have a cluster in site B, uh, I'm assuming replication is something, yeah. right? So if we have that and you're providing S3 as a protocol, um, and I'll get, this is a question that uh, you want to ask. So it's, <laughs> if I overwrite an object in S3 in site A, am, uh, you know, what's my consistency model from that? Am, am I you know, immediately consistent in, uh, on site A? Is it eventually consistent? Um, or you know, what's, what's the, because in Amazon, for instance, you look at Amazon, right. you overwrite, it's not, you, you may not get this, the same data. If it's new, you always will. So right. how do you play so, in that world? So as Ganesh mentioned, in a site A, if you write any object via S3, it will strongly consistent. You'll always see the- Even overwrites? Yes, overwrites. We are strongly consistent. So in that way, we are uh, uh, d differentiated from Amazon S3 or mm -hmm. any other uh, S3 provider. So we'll not, never get the stale data. Like S3, Amazon is eventually consistent. We are strongly consistent. Mm -hmm. And with regards to replication on the other side, B, uh, what we don't support, is we don't support a synchronous replication or the stretch cluster in the you mentioned earlier. We support is async replication. You can define a policy that, okay, replicate this bucket every maybe one hour or two hour and that bucket will get replicated on the other side. It, that am, am I able to retrieve, to do a, to do a get on the replica <laughs> from an S3 perspective while you're still in that, you know, while I'm still active on site A? On the replica on the site B? Yes, am I able to get an S3 get on site B? Yes, yes. I but am, totally but that's going to be eventually consistent based on your asynchronous replication. Yes, schedule. right. Okay. Right, right. It's true. So in this demo, what I will do is that I will create one bucket which will have NFS read write some be read write and S3 read only permission. But some customers they don't want to expose the, their bucket or a view for all the protocol. What we also provide the ability in the UI to expose the data only via SMB protocol only, in which case S3 access will be not allowed. And if you choose, you can also select a S3 only access or even NFS only access. And so just one second, just to address your comment, the way we do replication over is we'll do a clone on, the, on site A then we're going to transfer that, and then you're going to do a get. So there is no eventual consistency. You'll get whatever was the data at the time of being uh, the clone. From the user perspective. From the user's perspective. Consistent. User perspective is eventually consistent, but I, I, I understand your point. Yeah. <clears throat> so the second demo which I, we are going to do is. Just for architecture purposes. The second demo we're going to show is like, what I will do is that I have a bucket where I'll write via an SMB protocol and show you how data could be, you know, immediately and simultaneously access via S3. And that will be for the read-only purpose, right? And the third demo, which I'm going to do, is about instant cloning of a bucket. So I will have a bucket. I pre populate some data in it. and instantly clone that bucket. And now you can do read-write on it, right? So the question you were mentioning that, you know, uh, you can clone it, and then you can do read-write. So customer love this feature for our, our implementation. So what they can do is, like, currently, if, S3, I think most of the vendor don't provide ability to clone the bucket. If they want to have a test and dev copy, what they do is that they have a separate copy of their bucket. Now, imagine you have a bucket with just 50 TB of data. You want to have a separate copy, you have to manage it a separate 50 TB of copy of data. Right? That will cause you know, multiple copies of your data. And with CoCD, what you can do is that you can take instantaneously clone of your bucket, which is a zero cost in terms of space, and you spin it up for your test and dev. You can give it to your QA and, and developers. One what customer has done is that if they, when they want to roll out any software release, they will clone the live copy of their bucket, uh, run the new software against that new bucket, and make sure that the software is fine, they're meeting their performance metric, they're meeting their SLAs, and this helps them to you know accelerate their new software rollouts. So before we get to that, I mean, the, the data is deduped and compressed uh, you've mentioned erasure coding a number of times. Is there a specific erasure code that you're using? So we use uh, whatever you can configure in the UI. So in the UI, you can configure like 2 is to 1, 5 is to 2, go to the it's UI. It's software defined. It's software. So there is no specific. You can set the parameters of the erasure coding through our UI, and that So up to how many parity levels then? How many failures can you support? Um, <coughs> it really depends on the cluster. Uh, our UI, as he's saying, is pre configured with, a mud, with two or three different kinds of erasure coding. But the underlying technology can support any parity. But of course, let's say you're 
trying to support, I don't know, five is to four erasure coding, you better have more than nine nodes in the system, right? So it's on a so per node kind of basis. That's right. Yeah. So with that, I will go into the demo, right? So, okay. What I will do is that I will log into a, I have a Windows box. So I'm in the cluster and uh, what I will do is I'll go to the platform page and the view page. So what you can do is that in this page now you can create a view for your multi-protocol access. I'll give it a name called SFD demo and I'll give it all access and then we'll select a domain. So domains define your what kind of storage policy you want to apply, what origin coding you want to apply, what uh, whether you want to apply inline dedupe or post dedupe. You select this, you select a QS policy. For this demo, I will select a policy of test and dev high. And in this page, now you can select the protocol. Now, first demo I'm going to show is like select a protocol of A all, and then you can. I'll let the other default parameters and so in this case you're not actually creating a clone you're just creating another access protocol path to getting the same data so what I did I just created a new bucket in this uh, oh, okay yeah so this so, was not a clone this was a fresh new bucket all right I just created a new bucket now you can now use this two for read write via NFS or SMB and now you can access the data via S3 also what I will do also is now create another view which is for just S3 purpose only. So you can create a SFD demo just for S3 only access. And again, select a domain and select a maybe test and dev high. And then the last thing now I can only select an S3 because I don't want to have a lot of other people to access this and create the view. So it already exists, so I will give a different name. Just call it SFD. So this is how simple it was to create the bucket from our UI. So I created two, two buckets. One was for NFS and SMB read write, and S3 read only access. Another was for S3 read write access. And the same way, you can now just go to our UI, and also if you want to now clone this bucket for your test and dev, now you can now just go and you know, clone it and give it a name something called S3 clone one. And I can continue, and boom, this is done. And when you do the clone, does it inherit the same permissions that the original had? Yes, that's a good point. So when we clone the bucket, it will inherit its own original properties. Let's say you have, so S3 supports having uh, object level ACLs. So when you clone, it will preserve those ACLs for the object mm -hmm. so that the security is, is not uh, compromised. So you can access the, the privilege will be maintained. So even when you replicate your bucket from, let's say, site A to site B, those ACLs are still maintained at the bucket and the object level. Mm -hmm.